taking a step of faith, uh, either in faith uh, formation or faith development, being baptized or being reaffirmed uh, in their baptism. And um, it's a culmination of our whole sermon series on baptism. So because we're doing that, we're going to have, we got two services going on simultaneously. There's a lot of buzz and excitement right now in the chapel. There's a bunch of folks in the chapel right now who are actually watching us in the worship center right now. So what we're doing is we're broadcasting uh, this service over there. And then at, we go to the baptismal liturgy and the baptismal block. We'll broadcast from there into here so you guys can see it. There will be a little delay. We still have a little bit of delay. Maybe it's behind me. Y'all are looking at it right now. I don't know. But um, uh, it's a great opportunity. It's a great way, great celebration, uh, great way that we can celebrate this whole baptismal series uh, as we take this step of faith of helping more people live life with Jesus every day. So let's start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank and praise you for this time that we can be together, for the opportunity we have to, to learn from you, to receive from you, to live for you. And so Lord, I ask you to bless this worship service. I pray that you'll, you'll be with all the folks over in the chapel right now as they're taking that step of faith. Lord, send your Holy Spirit. Give us opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. For we begin in your name, remembering our baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I'm going to invite the congregation to stand. Let's worship. Good morning, Gloria Day Church. How many of us are ready to celebrate on this Baptist Sunday? Amen. Here we go. All right, lift your voice and sing with us this morning. I believe there is one salvation, one doorway that leads to life, one redemption, one confession. I believe in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Come on, sing with us and say. I believe in the crucifixion by his blood i have been set free i believe in the resurrection hallelujah his life is dead to me all praise to god the father all praise to christ the son all praise to the holy spirit our god has overcome the king who was and is and evermore will be in jesus mighty name i believe oh yes jesus i believe i believe in the hope of heaven He's preparing a place for me Far beyond hearts and magic Ears have heard or eyes have seen I believe that day is coming He's returning to claim his bride Light the altar, keep it burning See the lamp who rose and rose praise to God our Father, all praise to Christ the Son, all praise to the Holy Spirit, our God has overcome, the King who was and is and evermore will be, in Jesus' mighty name, I believe. We believe in all that you are doing this morning, King Jesus. So we declare our faith and we worship. No, I'll never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. How could I ever walk away from the one who saved my life? No, I'll never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. How could I ever walk away? From the one who saved my life Oh no, I'll never be ashamed From the gospel of Jesus 
Jesus Christ How could I ever walk away From the one who saved my life We say All praise to God our Father All praise to Christ the Son All praise to the Holy Spirit Our God has overcome The King who was in this this morning. Amen. All right, church, put those hands together as we continue to lift this name on high this morning. Amen. See what does it say? I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. Let me you say, I believe in signs and wonders. Yes, I do. I have resurrection power. Still the miracle that I just can't get over. My name is registered in heaven. Say my praise. My praise belongs to you forever. Let me hear you say this morning. This is my testimony from day to life Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify By Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified This is my testimony This is my testimony Yeah Come together sons and daughters and washed in water oh, Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father Our God will finish what He started Yes, yes. Our God will finish what He started This is my testimony from there to life Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Yeah. If I'm not dead, then you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, then you're not done. We say, greater things are still to come. Let me hear you say this morning. If I'm not dead, then you're not done. Greater things, greater things are still to come. If I'm not dead, if I'm not dead, if I'm not dead, then you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. All right, church, lift your voice and say it one more time. This is my testimony from dead to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify. By Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. Oh, I'm alive. This is 
my testimony from there to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'll testify. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Let's pray. Hey, Lord, uh, thank you so much for this time to be together, for the study of your word. Lord, uh, open our hearts, our minds to hear this word, to receive this word, but to live this word. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm invite the congregation to be seated. You know, we're finishing up our baptism series this morning. And as a culmination of that series, we're celebrating with 48 individuals who are taking the next step in their faith formation and development. You see, we began this series four weeks ago at taking a deeper look into what the Bible says about baptism. Answering questions such as, why should we baptize? Why even is there baptism? Who is to be baptized? How, is it should, be, how should baptism be done? And then what does it mean to live as a baptized child of God? First week, we learned that baptism is a sacrament. One of the two in, in, in our church body, baptism, Lord's Supper, in which baptism combines and unites God's all-powerful word. When we say in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, with simple water, God shows up in a divine way. God shows up in an extraordinary way. In that divine act, God gives us his Holy Spirit. He creates faith in us, forgives our sins, creates new life in us, and promises eternal salvation. We also learned that our sinful nature, both that we're born with sin and that we commit sin daily, demands punishment. You know, Scripture is very clear in Romans 6, 23. It says, the wages of sin is death. I mean, that's just awful. You know, the little sin, the big sin, the habitual sins, the ones we commit, the ones we forget about doing. Sins of omission, commission. But that verse continues on, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. And so we looked at the reasons why we would want to be baptized, why we need baptism. Because the biggest one is that it connects us with Jesus. Baptism connects us to Jesus. His life is death that we might live. Because it's commanded by our Lord himself. Because baptism offers the forgiveness of sins. Because baptism gives us the Holy Spirit, creates faith in us. Because baptism promises eternal salvation to all who believe. Second week, we learned that all nations means all y'all, everybody, regardless of age or gender or demographic. We learned that baptism is not about our confession, that we bring nothing to the water of the holy baptism, we show up and God does the heavy lifting. Baptism, God working in and through us through the power of the Holy Spirit. Pastor Randy shared us last week that how we baptize doesn't matter. It's that we apply water. That water is applied, and, and then we got to hear the great theologian Mater from the movie Cars, how he quoted, just get her done. So this morning, I want to bring it all together. And I want to talk about a call to action that we read in Acts chapter 8 about an Ethiopian official, about what it means to be a baptized child of God, and what does it mean now for us to live in our baptismal identity. You see, some of us have been baptized a long time ago, and we forgot it, we didn't remember it, we didn't know about it, we were told about it but you're baptized. And I think so many times we forget or we take it for granted what that actually means. 
And so I really want to talk to us today about what it means to live as a baptized child of God. That good, bad, indifferent, struggles, pain, whatever it is, I can say, I am baptized. I am God's child. I belong to him. And as Romans 8 says, neither life nor death, nor angels nor demons, nothing, nothing can ever separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So open your Bibles to Acts chapter 8. I'm a little fired up this morning. Sorry, not sorry. Acts chapter 8. It's going to be on page 916 if you're using the Bibles in front of you. Actually, it'll be on 917. And I want you to look at this story about this Ethiopian official and the encounter that he had with Philip. Let's begin with verse 26. Chapter 8, Acts chapter 8, verse 26. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go toward the south of the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. Now, I want you to think about this. Philip is open to hearing the word of God. Now, how did that happen to him? Was it an audible voice? Was it a nudge? Was it his, we don't know. But what I love about it is that he was open to the Spirit's prompting. That means he was available he wasn't so filled with so much stuff in his life and so busy schedules that here am I, send me, send me. Verse 27, and he rose and went. He was obedient. He heard the call. He went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. This official was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning, seated in his chariot, and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Now, we don't really understand what this all means because he went to Jerusalem to worship, but he wouldn't have been allowed in the temple. He may have heard something read that day in the temple from the outcourts or the uh, outside, and it was Isaiah 53, and, and he was perplexed. He was, huh. The story unfolds. As Philip, prompted by the Spirit, encounters this Ethiopian official where he had gone to Jerusalem to worship. Now, as I said, he most likely would not have been able to enter into the temple, which would also mean he wasn't able to receive forgiveness of his sins. He wouldn't have gone through the sacrificial system, the Old Testament rites of, 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 of sacrificing an animal. And we're not sure what it meant that he went to Jerusalem to worship. I mean, what did he do? Did he just watch? Did he call that work? I don't know. What, we, we don't know. But that illustrates further this incredible divine appointment that God has for this Ethiopian official through Philip. Look at verse 29. And the Spirit said to Philip, go over and join this chariot. I mean, imagine that. You are minding your own business. Holy Spirit says, hey, go meet this guy. And oh, by the way, it's an Ethiopian official, incredibly trusted. He's with all the treasury of Queen Candace of Ethiopia. So there's going to be guards. There's going to be all kinds of regalia. And just go join the chariot. And <laughs> what does Philip do? He ran to him. I mean, that's awesome. He, he, he is obedient to this prompting of the Spirit and he heard the Ethiopian official reading Isaiah the prophet, and I loved how he engages him. Philip doesn't say, hey, if you died today, would you go to heaven? Or would you go to hell? Or do you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? No. He approached the individual where they were. It's an awesome recipe for talking faith. Y'all, it's not that hard. We make it so overcomplicated. We think we got to memorize some 10 point outline. We got to know the Roman road. We got to know this. You know what? Open your mouth. Luke 12 actually says the Holy Spirit will give you the words to say. Do you understand what you're reading? And look how the Ethiopian official answers, verse 31. He said, How can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Invitation extended, invitation accepted. Philip responds. He's looking for an opportunity to share his faith. And he met the official where he was. 
let me take a quick detour. I want you to see what's happening here. Philip was one of the seven chosen by the disciples in Acts chapter 6 to assist them in the ministry. So go back one page to Acts chapter 6, verses 3 to 4. There was some struggles that the disciples, remember they had like 3,000 added to their number and they kept increasing and they're, they're, there's not enough of them to do all the ministry. Verse 3, therefore brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom you will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Philip is not one of the original 12 disciples. He was what we call a deacon or an evangelist. Chosen by the disciples, the apostles of 12 or 11, with the daily distribution of food. Yes, they were set apart by the disciples. But I, and, and by the way, I am not diminishing my role or my education when I say this. My seminary training. I want you to hear that loud and clear. I love what I do, and I love how the theological formation I had going to the seminary. But Philip didn't have any formal seminary training with Jesus. And yet he's doing ministry. What do I take from that? Y'all, you don't have to be a pastor to share God's word. You're a follower of Jesus. The great commission that says, go make disciples of all nations, that means you too. My job, if you look at Ephesians chapter 4, is to equip the saints for the building up of the body of Christ. My job is really to help y'all do the work of the ministry. Helping more people live life with Jesus cannot be done just by the four pastors here. You are the priesthood of a believer. You are the body of Christ. You are a people claimed by God, forgiven, redeemed, marked by your baptism, given the gift of the Holy Spirit, redeemed by Jesus, forgiven of your sins, to live out your baptismal identity. And here's Philip explaining the scriptures to this Ethiopian official, and his heart was open to receive the truth of God's word. Remember, the word of God is a means of grace. And he heard the message of the gospel because Philip was available. Philip was obedient. Philip pointed him to Jesus as the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy. There, there's a great section in Romans chapter 10 where Paul writes, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him, on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they've never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they're sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Now, I got to tell y'all something. Some of y'all, well, okay, I would say me. We don't have good looking feet. Our feet are kind of, mm. I'm telling you, you don't like your feet, go share the gospel. You've got some beautiful looking feet. How beautiful are the feet of those who are obedient and go. Share the good news with Jesus. Back to Acts. Verse 32, Acts 8, 32. Now the passage of Scripture that the Ethiopian official was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shearers is silent, so he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who could describe this generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. And the eunuch then said to Philip, Dude, no, he didn't say that, but, you know, the DSV says dude, Dan Shepman version. Y'all just got that, didn't you? About whom I ask you, does the prophet say this? Is he talking about himself or about someone else? And then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with the scripture, he told him the good news of Jesus. Isaiah 53 is the suffering servant section. That by his stripes we are healed. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was wounded for our iniquities. By his stripes we are healed. 
Philip's answer was to proclaim Jesus as his Messiah, beginning with this text. Then he unfolded the rest of the Old Testament. And the result, look at verse 36. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, see, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And the official commanded the chariot to stop. They both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized them. Now let me go full circle back to week one. Remember the sermon that Peter preached in Acts chapter 2. Remember what happened? He preached this amazing sermon. The people in verse 37, Acts 2, 37, they said, when they heard this message, they were cut to the heart, and they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Peter's response, verse 38, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For what? The forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now look how cool this is, verse 39. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are from Ethiopia, who are from far off. Man, this this text is being uh, interpreted and, and lived out right before our very eyes. For everyone who the Lord our God calls to himself. This is a fulfillment of Matthew 28, the Great Commission, where Jesus said, go make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them, how? Name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Philip is living out the marching orders of Acts chapter 1-8 where Jesus said, you'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. The Spirit prompted Philip to go. The Spirit gave Philip the words to say, and you will be my witnesses where? Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, ends of the earth. Biblical historians say and surmise that this Ethiopian official brought the gospel to Ethiopia. You want to talk about ends of the earth? And then look at verse 39. And when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more. But then look, here's baptismal identity right here. And the Ethiopian official went on his way, what? Rejoicing. Y'all, that's what it means to live out our baptismal identity. In the waters of holy baptism, we are marked as beloved children of God. We're called by him, given the gift of the Holy Spirit, to live fully alive in God's grace. We're guided by the Spirit. You see, our baptism is not just a past event. It's a present reality that shapes everything we do, that it can direct our daily living and give us hope for the future and it promises me eternal life. Y'all, I know one day I'm gonna die and I know one day I'm gonna be in heaven. Why? Because I am baptized. I'm a baptized child of God. My spouse, my kids, they can grieve with hope because they know I'm in heaven. They know I'm with Jesus. Let me close with this. An elderly pastor moved. Maybe I shared this story with you before. If I have, forgive me. Just act like you haven't heard it, okay? An elderly pastor moved into a new community, and he was assumed some of the responsibilities of a local church. Warmly greeted by the congregation, but they couldn't help but not notice the odd way he would introduce himself. You see, if someone would come up and introduce themselves to this pastor, they would extend their hand to shake his. But instead of reaching out to grasp their hand immediately, He would take his left hand and he placed it on his head. And then he'd extend his right hand just to greet that other person. Everybody wondered, what's what's this dude doing? What what, what is that all about? But, you know, no one's going to ask. Well, that is until they met little Johnny. A couple weeks later, it was one of those moments when between the services, a large group of people still hanging out in the narthex, the worship commons, whatever you want to call it, A new family is introduced to the pastor. That pastor did his usual thing. Nobody's paying attention anymore. Until little Johnny blurted out, Pastor, why do you do that? That's weird. Why do you put your hand on your head? Man, E.F. Hutton speak. You know, remember that commercial? I just dated myself. 
Everybody stopped to listen. All became silent. All eyes now focused on the scene because now we're going to finally hear what it's all about. Thank you, little Johnny. The pastor then knelt down, got eye to eye with that little boy. He said, Johnny, the reason why I put my hand on my head as I shake hands is to remind me of my baptism. When I place my hand on my head, I'm reminded that God placed his hand on me. It tells me, reminds me that I am baptized. And I'm going to be introduced as a child of God. You see, one of the most powerful parts of baptism for me, in addition to the actual baptism, is when I say to an infant, a child, an adult, receive the sign of the Holy Cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Remember who you are. You are a baptized child of God. Marked by God. And because God has brought you into this relationship with him, redeemed you by the blood of his own son, Jesus Christ, forgiven you all your sin, given you the gift of the Holy Spirit, we have a new identity. We don't have to listen to what the world says about us. We don't have to listen to what the negative self-talk we have about ourselves. We can say all we want to that we're not worthy or we're not good enough or we're not smart enough or we're not pretty enough or we're not tall enough or you name it. Those are lies of the evil one. Stop. In the name of Jesus, stop. You are baptized. You are a child of God. Even when life's not fair, even when life throws you a curveball, even when you're struggling, when you're dealing with excruciating pain or sorrow, grief or loss, when you feel nothing but emptiness or fear, when you're ready to just give it all away, give it all up, you are baptized. And so I close with this the first week, and I'm going to close with the end. Lord, when I get discouraged by my troubles in life, remind me of my baptism. Lord, when I'm tempted to doubt your love for me, remind me that I'm yours. Lord, when I sin against you and then seek your mercy, remind me of my baptism. Lord, when I'm tempted to go against your will, remind me that I am yours. Lord, as long as I live, remind me of my baptism. Remind me that I am yours. May God grant that to each of us. For Jesus' sake, to him alone be the glory. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I give you thanks. I give you thanks that we can say, I am baptized, that we belong to you that you placed your name on our hearts and our lives, claimed us as your own, forgiven us, redeemed us, given us the gift of faith and the power of the Holy Spirit. Connect us to your son, Jesus Christ, his life, his death, and so we can live fully alive in your grace. Lord, as we're about to witness and celebrate with these, these folks who are taking a step to being baptized or reaffirming their baptism, Lord, I give you thanks and praise that we can celebrate along with them as you're celebrating with them also. Lord, help us now today to live as your forgiven, redeemed, baptized children. In Jesus' name, amen. Move the Boss fundraiser was able to exceed the goal. So thank you very much for your generosity. <laughs> now we will be able to bring the kids back to, the, to Houston. With that, let's begin our time of offering. If you are a first-time guest, please scan uh, the QR code and pew in front of you so you can check in. Ushers, you may come forward with the offering plates at this moment.
in the last chapter of Matthew. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I will be with you always to the very end of the age. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. God's word is also very clear that we are born sinful and that we are in need of forgiveness. But God, in his great love for us, sent his Son, Jesus Christ, to take the punishment we deserved, and by his death, we have new life. Please pray with me. Lord, we confess that we are sinful and unclean. We confess that we have not loved you with all of our heart and mind and strength, and that we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. And we are in need of your forgiveness. And so we thank you for the washing of us clean through, uh, from our sin through the waters of baptism, for breaking the chains of our guilt and our shame. We thank you for loving us and making us your own. We thank you for the forgiveness of sins and life and salvation. Amen. Together as the family of God, we share our common confession of who God is through the words of the Apostle Creed. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we have questions and commitments to hear from all of you who are being baptized or reaffirmed. So the first goes to the parents of children who are being baptized or reaffirmed. God has called you to be the primary faith former in your child's life. He has equipped you with his spirit to lead and strengthen you in this endeavor. Will you do as God commands and as he has called you to teach you, to teach your child what it means to live as a child of God and to impress upon them the Christian faith, the faith in which they're being baptized in today? If so, say to your child, look at them and say, yes, with the help of God. To all of you who are sponsors or godparents uh, to your loved one, the church has had a tradition since early times of sponsors who are willing to stand by, support, encourage, and, and walk with those who are being baptized in the Christian faith, as well as those who are being reaffirmed in their baptism. Are you willing to do this with the help and the strength of God? If so, say to your loved one, to the one that you're sponsoring, say to them, I am with the help of God. I am with the help of God. Awesome. To all those who are reaffirming their baptism, your baptism years ago was a sign and a seal of God's promise to always be with you, even to the end of the age. Through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the power of your sin was broken. This reaffirmation today of your baptism is not a second baptism. And we hear these words from Ephesians 4. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in all. So today, you are confirming what God did years ago in your baptism. So I ask you, all of you being baptized and all of you reaffirming in your baptism, do you believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed? Do you reject the devil and all his works and all his ways? Do you believe that Jesus has forgiven you of all your sin? Do you desire to live as a new creation in Christ? If so, say, I do. I do. I do. Will you strive to lead a more godly life in your thoughts, in your words, and in your actions and seek to live a life fully alive in God's grace? If so, say, I will with the help of God. I will with the help of God. So to the Gloria Day family, to the congregation, to those of you in the worship center, I ask you, we have confessed our faith in the triune God. We have heard the promises of these candidates for baptism as well as those who are being reaffirmed in their baptism. Now we are to be the church, to be examples of living life for Jesus every day. We are to pray for them, support them so that they live a fully alive life in Jesus Christ. And so I now ask all of you, do you agree, do you agree to serve in this role? If so, answer yes with the help of God. Yes, yes with, the, with help the help of, of God. God. Please pray with me. O most gracious Heavenly Father, you have gathered your church through the waters and promises and baptism. And as you have stamped us as your own, we thank you for the inheritance that we will receive as you have called us into your family. Lord, be with your church. Protect your church from the attacks of the evil one. Lift up and sustain your church. Bring healing to the hurting, comfort to the afflicted, hope to the mourning, and to calm the anxious. Lord, let our joy and peace always be found in you. And for the sake of your Son who has taught us to pray, our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and, and, the, and the glory, glory forever, forever and ever. Amen. 
we invite you to be baptized to reaffirm your baptism. And as you come forward, be sure to bring that card with you. Uh, that'll be helpful for us to be able to say your name and know whether you're being baptized or being reaffirmed. Again, family and friends of your loved one, when they're coming forward for their baptism, you feel free to join them up here if they're being sprinkled or around the baptistry if they're being immersed. And we have a prayer team to celebrate with you after your baptism or reaffirmation. Uh, so meet with them. They'll be all over here in the chapel. We would be honored to pray over you and celebrate this great step that you're taking with Jesus Christ. So welcome to the waters of baptism. Those, and, yes, yes those who are going to be sprinkled, please bring your shell with you up here. Yes. The whole bag. <laughs> Yeah. 
wandering into the night Wanting a place to hide This weary soul This bag of bones And I try with all my might But I just can't win the fight I'm slowly drifting A vagabond Just when I ran out of road, I met a man I didn't know, and he told me that I was not alone. He picked me up, he turned me around, he placed my feet on solid ground. I think a master, I think a savior. deny what I've seen Got no choice but to believe My doubts are burning Like ashes in the wind So, so long to my old friends Burning and bitterness You can't just keep it moving Nah, you ain't welcome here From now till I walk the streets of gold, I'll sing of how you saved my soul. This wayward son has found his way back home. We say, pick me up, he turned me around, he placed my feet on solid ground. I think a master, I think a savior, because he healed my heart, he changed my name. salvation one doorway that leads to life 
One redemption, one confession. I believe in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe in the crucifixion. By his blood I have been set free. I believe in the resurrection. Hallelujah, his life is dead. All praise to God the Father, all praise to Christ the Son, all praise to the Holy Spirit, our God has overcome. The King who was and is and evermore will be, in Jesus' mighty name. Preparing a place for me Far beyond what hearts imagine Ears have heard or eyes have seen I believe that day is coming He's returning to claim his bride Light the altar, keep it burning See the Lamb who grows a roaring light All praise to God our Father, all praise to Christ the Son, all praise to the Holy Spirit, our God has overcome, the King who was and is and evermore will be, in Jesus' mighty name. never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. How could I ever walk away from the world who saved my life? Oh no, I'll never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. How could I ever walk away from the world who saved my life? praise to God the Father, all praise to Christ the Son, all praise to the Holy Spirit, our God has overcome. The King who was and is and evermore will be, in Jesus' mighty Registered in heaven. I believe 
and signs and wonders I have resurrection power Still the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven Yes, my praise belongs to you forever This is my testimony from death to life Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify By Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified This is my testimony This is my testimony Come together sons and daughters with blood and washed in water Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father Our God will finish what He started Yes, our God will finish what He started This is my testimony from dead to life Cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Yeah. If I'm not dead, then you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, then you're not done. You're not done, you're not. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, then you're not done. Greater things are still to come. If I'm not dead, then you're not done. Greater things are still to come, oh, I believe. This is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story, I'll testify. By Jesus Christ the righteous, I'll testify. This is my testimony, oh, I this is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Yeah.
my story. I'll testify that God is good all the time. He saw me and heard my cry. Now I am His, and this is my story. I'll testify that God is good all the time. He saw me and heard my cry. Now I am His, and He is mine. He is mine. That God is good all the time. He saw me and heard my cry. Now I am His. Said this is my story. I'll testify that God is good all the time. He saw me and heard my cry. Now I am His. This is my story. I'll testify that God is good all the time. He saw me. And heard my cry, now I am his, and he is moment I have a few few short announcements before we leave today first thing is on May 2nd we have a national day of prayer and it will be an activity here in the chapel from 11 a.m. to noon also the second announcement is that we have on May 5th we have a leaders forum where Pastor Dan and Beth will be communicating information about the three-phase uh, approach that we have for the health and growth of Gloria Day's facility and community Truly, your opinion matters, so we're seeking that you are able to be here. It will be May 5th from 5 to 7 p.m. Also, as you are on your way out, make sure you grab one of the newsletters so you can know more information about what is going on in Gloria Day. Please stand up as we are dismissed this afternoon and receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. All praise to God the Father. All praise to Christ the Son. All praise to the Holy Spirit. Our God has And this and evermore will be in Jesus' mighty name. I believe. That was holy day. Have a great weekend. All praise to God the Father. 